Hey guys, it's me again, Mickey. Dum 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 dum. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I get shy. So I thought that I've spoken a lot about my transition and a lot about where I am now and where I was when I started my transition and how the transition has been and stuff like that. But I've realized that I actually haven't spoken much about how I felt before my transition and it's my phone and I don't know if anybody actually cares but I had a lot of things to think about and it was really confusing for me so I shall start from the beginning okay so I want to start from the, like the beginning beginning because I have only got a couple minutes on my SD card so I kind of first knew about me probably from like age four or five somewhere around there I think it's pretty common place for people to know but I didn't know at that time how I've seen it is people aren't really children aren't really gender aware if, if, if I can say that they're not they, they don't really know the difference between a boy and a girl other than genitalia with magic hands and and and, uh, and so like characteristics for me were different so I like if I play a game I'd play a really feminine role in any game I grew up in a family full of boys so if we play an army game I would be the damsel in distress I would have to be the one who needed to be saved or who would fall and need someone to help them and um you know, a very feminine role, I guess. And, too dark. And, yeah, so I think that was like the kind of the first, well, the, the first thing I can remember. And then I know when like the Spice Girls came out, I know, Spice Girls came out, I really wanted to be Baby Spice. Like for me, that was the biggest thing in the world. And I just remember my cousins and stuff. Just being like, you know, it's a little bit weird. You know, you shouldn't, it's, it's, not, it's not who you should be. That's not right. And then I kind of like pushed it away almost because I was like, it's not right. This is, you know, I've been told that it's not right. So that's how it was. So I suppressed it, you know, and I suppressed it for a very long time. And feelings came and went, you know, so there was a lot of times where, I would, <laughs> it, it sounds kind of dodgy now, but like I would steal underwear and then wear that like every chance I could. And I remember when I was, I must have been seven, eight, nine, like through to 13, I would wake up in the morning and pray I had a vagina. Like it was the weirdest thing, you know, like I was just like, this isn't what I want. This isn't who I am. And I would like look under the duvet covers to see if it had changed and it hadn't. And I'd be like, hmm. And yeah, so it was again, you know, but because I had been told that this wasn't right or this wasn't who, it, who I needed to be, I did this in secret. I never spoke to anyone about it. I never, and no one ever told me that like transgender existed. So I suppressed this and I, I, I dealt with it by myself for a very long time. And when I got to like 13 or so, like the see the feelings kind of died down a bit and through a bit of research that I've done and like speaking to certain people and my therapist and things like that they say that just this generally does happen with a boost of testosterone and your life takes turns and I had ups and downs and moving and everything so like it kind of fell to the wayside for a bit and then it came back at like 15 16 and I again once I, I had these feelings I had to dress up and I had to act more feminine but by that point I'd already established myself as such a masculine man that it became harder for me to do so because you know I had imposed myself I'd started doing martial arts I had become an, a serious sportsman um, so it became harder for me to deal with these things and once again I did not know that these feelings were natural that like it, it's actually who I was I didn't know this um, I thought maybe I had a weird fetish or I had a weird 
disease or, or something like that along those lines. So again, I suppress them. I would do things by myself when I was alone and I'd try on women's clothes and things like that. And as it progressed, I got progressively more angry. So when I went to my new school, because I moved schools a lot, um, I instilled like a dominance, a masculine dominant dominance through rugby. So I became known as one of like the hardest tacklers, one of the most physical people in the team, purely for the fact that it was an outlet for me to let go of my anger and my rage without getting into trouble. I actually was allowed to. Um, and I became known for being very, very physical. And although this outlet helped me relax, it didn't solve the problem. And it just made me more aggressive because I actually had no idea that this anger was related to me being trans. You know, I, did, I had no idea that this anger related to me wearing women's underwear or it related to me dressing up or wanting to do makeup or wanting to wear a girl's school uniform, as simple as that. I mean, I hate that the boy uniform is horrible. And, you know, so I didn't know that these two things correlated because I didn't know what transgender was. So my anger throughout my whole school career grew. And I had lots of friends because obviously I was such a good sportsman that I grew quite popular. But at the same time, I was always alone. You know, I never had solid friends. I was friends with everyone. I was that person who would go from group to group to group to group and be friendly to everyone and be friends with everyone. But I felt like no one ever really knew me. I'm sorry, I heard tapping. It's ghosts. Ooh. <laughs> it's my girlfriend's airbrush. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so I, like I was friends with everyone, but I don't think anyone really knew me. And which is why I constantly went from group to group because perhaps I was looking for someone to see the real me, maybe, to, to accept, to question, to, to anything, the fact that I was living a lie. Dramatic black. Dramatic black. I'm kidding. And um, so, yeah, and, and it took, a, like, I never realized it in school. It never, ever crossed my mind. I would dress up in secrets. I would do makeup in secrets. I would do all these things by myself, but I wouldn't, I never dreamt of telling anyone. I never dreamt of hinting towards it. I never dreamt of, it was just so far wrong for me. I felt so ashamed even when I did it. It felt right, but I felt ashamed that I grew more angry because of it. And then I eventually le left school. Yeah, I passed. It was a miracle. Everyone rejoiced. And I started dating a girl. I dated girls throughout my whole high school career, and um, and we dated for a long time. And I remember I hinted at wearing women's and wearing her underwear while we were fooling around. And I just remember her freaking out and being like, "That's not natural. It's not right." Blah blah blah. But by this point, I was already dabbling in anabolic steroids. I had become pretty close to being a bodybuilder. I had been in numerous street fights. I had, you, you didn't get more masculine than me. It's, it's, which is funny because it's so, it was so far from who I really am. But it just, if someone said to you, typical male, that was me. I was aggressive. I was huge. I was, I had like 4% body fat. I was, I was horrible for me. And, um, so obviously when I hinted this at this, she saw this uber masculine manly man wanting to be slightly more feminine and got freaked out by it. And this drove me even more into the proverbial closet because once again, I had been met with shaming. I wasn't, I wasn't met with understanding or questioning. I was met with that's wrong. And this sent me back into denial, back into that this isn't natural, this isn't right. Um, so again, 
I, I tucked it away in the back of the darkest recesses of my mind and I continued doing what I was doing, which was being what people expected me to be, this masculine male jock brr, person. And I did, I did that for a long time and then I moved to a different city and this, at this point I was 20, 21, 22 and I had lived a really hectic life like in terms of violence and things like that and I'd moved to a new city and I'd started fresh basically but by now these feelings and emotions were so strong I was dressing up alone every night basically from clothes I'd stolen from friends from clothes I'd like I, like I went to the bottom of the barrel to be who I wanted to be but in secret and yeah, so it was quite hectic, you know, and at the first six months I was in that city, I didn't have any friends or didn't speak to anyone because I didn't want to. I didn't want to restart a life of lies. I didn't want to start again not telling people the truth, but I had no guts to actually tell people the truth because I didn't know what the truth was. So, you know, do I tell people I'm a crossdresser? Do I tell people I'm transvestite? I, I didn't think I was gay, I you know, so I didn't... I didn't have anything to say to people other than I'm weird. So I didn't. And true as Bob, I started a life as a lie again. You know, I um, made a bunch of new friends and I started a business with a friend doing beer pong. I mean, I drank for a living, it was great. And, and that's eventually how I started to cope with it. I stopped the violence because I realized that was either going to get me in, like in jail or shot and dead so I stopped that I tried try to find better means of dealing with that and that turned out to be drinking and you know so as as much as I wasn't violence I started drinking every night every second night but under the ruse of it was my business and it was the biggest cop out in the world because it was an easy way to not have to deal with anything. Um, because who's going to tell me not to drink if, it's, if I'm running a business? Under the ruse of if I don't drink, no one else will drink. So I have to. And I could drink those emotions away, wake up the next morning with a hangover and start again. And, and that's how I did it for four years. That, that's all I did and but still in free time dressing up when I could you know makeup when I could like I eventually told two or three girlfriends who were actually supportive it was the first time in my life that I'd actually been supported for this but again not knowing what I was just that I like to dress up and they were like okay that's cool different but cool and um, and only then did I actually start doing some research after speaking to them and they were like, well, maybe you should Google it or maybe you should, you know. And it was at that point, by the time I was 22, 23, that the, it was the first time I had heard about transgender, you know, and what it was and that it was okay and that there were people in the world who are born in the wrong body and it's not like sacrilege that it's actually okay. You know, it happens. And, um, you know, and this, this was groundbreaking for me because I was like, maybe this is me. For the first time in my life, I was like, I can actually relate to that as opposed to just being like, well, I kind of fit into that. Like, it related to me. And I remember I did this test on the internet called the Cogiati test, like C O G A I T I or something. And it's meant to be a questionnaire to see if you're trans or not. So it's like a, yes, no, maybe, yes, no, maybe, yes, no, maybe, kind of thing, you know. And um, I did that, and it came out as like, a, you probably are trans, but not 100%. And it was at this point that I was like, okay, this, this is sounding right to me. This, this, I'm not just a cross-dresser, because cross-dressing never made me feel complete. It made me feel comfortable. But it wasn't like a completion. It wasn't. It wasn't good enough for me. And but now I had some sort of answer. So I, I researched it a bit more, and I opened up another Facebook page in another name, um, in which in where I could 
find other friends or other people like me and actually speak to them without fear of persecution or bully or bullying or whatever from my actual friends and it became invaluable because the, the information I had found through that and through other people gave me the courage to eventually tell my mom which happened at a friend's birthday party she had well it was one of the friends I had told and she had had her theme be cross-dressing party so that everyone had to cross-dress so I didn't feel bad about going dressed as the real me because everyone was cross-dressed so no one would think weird of me by doing that so you know so that was the first night so I sent my I sent my mom a photo because she had obviously helped me do my makeup and everything and I sent my mom a photo and she as a joke was like oh thanks for giving me the daughter I'd always wanted and at that point I was like okay well I actually need to tell you something and I told her I was, I was like I think I'm trans and because she lived in a different city to me so it had to be through message and she just phoned me and she was like what do you mean and I was like well I know I've been this man but I'm not you know I feel like I'm a girl and her reaction was quite surprising because she didn't freak out she didn't go oh my god yay she just kind of went okay what can we do to fix this or what can we do to help this or what can, what, what can I do for you you know and I was like well from what I've read up I must go see a therapist and she was like cool we'll, we'll get in contact with someone we'll, 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 we'll start this and it was such an overwhelming feeling for me because even though I had told some friends telling a family member for me was the biggest thing because you hear so many stories of girls who are kicked out of their houses or kicked out of their families or kicked out of anything.